Welcome to this figurative language refresher. You've done this before. It's talking about imagery. Um, it's talking about metaphors and similes. And really, it's all about painting pictures in the minds of your readers with the words that you write. So good writing uses figurative language. We're going to start with a few definitions just to remind you what we're talking about. So imagery, this has a word inside of it that we all know, image. So imagery means writing that makes you see images when you read it. Can you repeat it after me? Imagery. Cool. Our first example of imagery is a simile. And this is a word that I always spell wrong because it does not sound the way it looks. So can you repeat it after me? Simile. Nice. So a simile is a comparison that uses like or as. Our first example. David is as angry as a fire-breathing dragon. So we've used as to compare David to a terrifying fire-breathing dragon. Probably scarier than this adorable one, although who knows. Another example, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee is a famous quote from Muhammad Ali. I just rhymed. About his style in boxing. So they're comparing his own um, soft feet so he floats in the ring because he's on his soft feet like a butterfly and he stings with his punches like a bee. So they're describing his punches and his feet like a butterfly and a bee. Now our other example is a metaphor. Can you repeat that after me? Metaphor. Nice. A comparison that does not use like or as. So again, it's still comparing two things. So we're still going to compare David to a dragon but we're not gonna see those connector words. So you could do it like this. David is a dragon when he wakes up. No one is spared from his fiery wrath. So he's terrifying. Or you could switch up Muhammad Ali's words like this. Ali was a tiger in the boxing ring. So we know obviously that he's a human, he's not a tiger, but the way he's acting and the way that David is acting is like a dragon and like a tiger. But we don't have to use those words like an ass. All right, now we're going to use that um, to be revising an example. And for my artists out there, you'll see at the end of this video, there are examples of how to do this with images because you can actually use visual similes and visual metaphors in your art. You can skip to that if you want. Now for my writers, okay, here is my example. Okay, I once had a dog named Bob. Bob was a good dog. Bob was very nice to everyone and he was always kind. One day, Bob saved me from a raccoon. That day was a great day in my life. So kind of boring, right? <laughs> I mean, okay, cool. We know something happened with this raccoon, but in general, um, I'm not really seeing any pictures in my head. I'm not seeing any imagery. So I'm gonna walk you through what I would do um, to actually add imagery to your example, okay? Now, you could do these steps in any order that you want, but for me, I start by adding descriptive language. Okay, so I want to add adjectives, add things that make it a little bit more interesting. So already you can see, I crossed out some banned words. The first one is good. Good is so general. Okay, and I switched it to angelic. Bob was an angelic dog, like an angel. Okay, and again, we've got these words very and nice. Banned words, very boring. So instead I said, he would energetically lick and jump on any person he encountered, okay? And instead of kind, which again, it's kind of general, we say he had a golden personality, right? And I went through and I looked for these banned words, like great at the bottom right here, and I replaced them with words that are a little bit more descriptive and that paint this picture. That was my first step, okay? And like I said, an easy trick is just to start by looking at the banned words. And if you're not sure where to find those, check out the 10th grade writing packet Okay, um, and it's number five, banned words, and that's on Google Classroom. Okay, the second step that I do is now I choose more specific words. So pretty similar to descriptive language, um, but for this one, we're looking for nouns. So nouns, an object or a thing um, or a person that are just kind of boring. So for this one, um, I start off with that first sentence. Okay, and the simple one to start with is dog. Cool, he's a dog. What kind of dog? He's a golden retriever. 
Okay, so I switched dog to something more specific by describing the type of dog. Okay, and then this is a little nitpicky, but this says I once had a dog. Well, when? When did you have this dog, right? Make it more specific in the time, in the timing. So I said I grew up with a dog to place it in that time of when I was young. And then at the bottom, I, even, I made it even more specific by switching one day to when I was 11. So you have a very specific time. You have specific words that have done that. Step three, we're getting into our imagery. So we're going to start by adding similes. And remember, similes use comparison um, with like or as. So in this case, up at the top, I already had this description that he was an angelic dog. But why not add a comparison there? We're already talking about an angel, and a cherub is just a small angel. So I could say Bob was as angelic as a cherub. I'm comparing him to an angel here. Okay, and now I've added some more details about how Bob saved my life. Okay, so I said on our walk home, I heard a sound like the growl of a monster. Can't you hear that? Right? Her coming from deep in the darkness. Okay, so we add those comparisons, we add that descriptive language, we can kind of see it with the movie. Okay, um, and here we changed that day was etched into my memory. What, what is something that looks etched? Okay, because etched means that you're sort of writing in metal. So I decided to compare it to a trophy. So etched into my memory like a name on a trophy. My last step was now to add metaphors. And metaphors are basically just the cousin of a simile, so it's another comparison, but there's no like or as, right? David was a dragon when he woke up. Cool. So you can see that in pink, I add them at the bottom. And for this one, it adds a lot of detail. So I didn't necessarily take anything out, but I added that suddenly I saw a golden ball of light attack the sound. It was Bob, because remember, he's a golden retriever. So we might see him as a golden ball of light, but is he actually a flaming ball of light? No, he's a dog, right? But in this case, he was my Superman. He, so he was my superhero coming in. So I added these metaphors um, to make you see something in your mind. Okay, so what we've got is this. Before we had this short, let's be real, kind of bland paragraph, okay? And it's turned into this. We've added details about the attack from the raccoon. We know how it really felt because we've got that description, we've got that imagery. Okay, and hopefully we've got something that's way less boring, something that we would actually want to read. So that's your goal for using figurative language to make your writing more interesting. And for my artists, here are some examples for you, because you can actually use this with artwork. So say you had um, a metaphor, our world is an ice cream cone melting on a summer day, right? Because if you're talking about climate change, that could look something like this. You could literally draw the ice cream cone with the world. Or maybe you like this one. That ketchup is as fresh as a vine ripe tomato. What's this one? A simile or a metaphor? Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's got that as, which means it's a simile. And maybe you draw that ketchup as if it was actually a sliced up tomato. I thought this was a kind of a cool ad, right? So we got a visual interpretation of that. How about... Brazil is about to take off. Okay, now, Brazil is not actually shooting up into space, but I thought this was a really cool picture of Rio de Janeiro. You've got the Jesus statue as if it was lifting up like a spaceship. Okay, um, And this is another metaphor that you probably hear a lot. He decided to unplug from technology. Hopefully we're all doing a little bit of that during quarantine as well. Maybe it looks like this. Okay, And look at that. It's kind of creepy. You can see all of the plugs around him trying to plug in, right? Social media is trying to grab us, but he's not going to do it. He's unplugged. Okay, so here's some inspiration for my artists. I'm very excited to see what you make. And of course, reach out with any questions, but good luck.